Hi, this is Raheem Zulfikar Ali from Excel Basement. In this video tutorial, we will learn one more awesome technique related to appending of data from multiple Excel workbooks which are available in a specific folder. And we will be importing all the different Excel files data into the Power BI through Power Query. You can apply the same technique in Microsoft Excel by using Power Query as well. The environment is same for Power Query, either you use in Excel or for the Power BI. So I have opened uh, the Power BI application that is the latest version for November 2023. So this is a desktop version. And uh, let's go to the case scenario first. So I have this folder uh, which, which has uh, four different Excel files. Uh, this data set pertains to uh, HR example. Uh, regarding the payroll and we have monthly payroll data available in a separate excel workbook so as you can see in this particular folder you can see in this particular folder uh, that that is uh, we need to append the data of hr payroll data set uh, which is in four different excel files so let's also preview uh, the data set as well okay month of uh, january and we have the following columns like code or you can say employee id their names father names and then nic numbers joining date designation department employee type employee status payment mode and their gross salaries now all the monthly basis excel files does not have uh, might be kind of similar sequence of columns for instance uh, the gross salary is the last column in january 2023 file whereas if i go to april uh, you can see uh, the code employee code is coming at the last if i go to another file that is for the march so in the march you can see the gross salary is coming uh, at the fourth position whereas uh, cnic number is on the last column so we need to append the data in such a way that uh, these are all, all different four files data combined together so that we can create a dashboard in power bi and we will see if there is any kind of issue while we do the appending of data one more important thing is that uh, these four excel files contains the payroll data and this data is being converted into a table format as you can see so i can go to table design tab and i can see the name here this is for the month of april so similarly uh, the sheet name is also you can see april 2023 now for in case if i go to february file uh, the table name is changed here uh, this is for the month of fab and the sheet name is february 23 now if you observe there is no such column that uh, which this specific data pertains to which month uh, eventually you know that where it is is being stored in actually it's in february file but when we append the data we need one extra column where we can see that uh, from which file or from which month this data is being coming because we don't have such column right here in the database. So we will also control this issue uh, while we append the data in Power BI. Okay. So these are some of the issues uh, which normally a user face uh, when they append a data from multiple Excel workbooks into the Power BI. So now I'm in my Power BI application. So to locate a folder i will click on get data then from this menu i will click on more that will open up a window where we can select the correct api so we will select a folder click on connect and we will paste that location so we need to define the folder path let's click on ok okay so this particular folder contains four excel files when they were created and accessed what is their location so what we need to do is we will not click on combine and then combine and load because we know that there is a limitation uh, because all the excel files pertains uh, different table names and different sheet names so this will not work here so we need to uh, bring this metadata into power query so we will click on transform data that will open up Power Query Editor. Uh, 
all right so we can see this metadata here we just need first two columns that is content and name as you can see here okay and we don't need these additional columns so we need to remove them so simple select all these columns and then just right click remove columns now we need to add a custom column so let's add that add column add custom column and first we will define a name here so let's say that as data and we will write an m language code here so that is excel dot workbook and we will select the content field from here bracket close and click ok all right so we have that uh, custom column with us that is known as data and now you need to open this drop down menu and uh, uncheck this use original column name as prefix let's click ok all right so we know that each of the excel file contains table and we want to uh, fetch the data from each of the table within that excel workbook so we will open the filter menu of kind and we will just select table here and let's click ok now we will go to this data dot one column again open this menu and see here we have all the columns now available to fetch from all the excel sheets so let's click ok so that's easy right uh, we also got the content column which is not of use so right click remove we don't need the file names here as well so you can remove as well here uh, we got the name of the month here from where this data is being coming from okay so that's a good thing which we wanted so let, let's rename it as month and that's we have the data here uh, we don't need the item kind and hidden columns as well these are the additional columns so let's just remove them okay. so we have gross salary column we have code column and everything is being appended very correctly as we saw in the excel file that some of the columns were here and there in some of the sheets but power query has handled those things one more important thing is that um, the column headers should be in same case sensitive and spelling in all the excel workbooks otherwise it gives you an error uh, let's name it as first names right now let's go to uh, the power bi let's load click close and apply and let's see if we are able to create some visualizations or we find some difficulty here and what happens for the next month so we will see that as well okay so now it what is doing here is um, on the on the x-axis we have put the month and on the y-axis we have put the gross salary but it's showing us the count here so this means something is not correct in, in the data set so we will go to the table view let's see what's going on and if we go to the report view april is coming at the first if you can see here april fab jan and march we don't want in such order we want in a chronological order jan feb march april now so how are we gonna handle this okay so let's see this and another issue you will find here is that the gross salary amounts are coming on the left side whereas you technically know that the number should be on the right side if the format is correct that's why uh, we are seeing the count here so let's correct this first step so we'll go to transform data to enter into the power query editor again and let's say we want to see if my cross salary format is as a whole number okay now i will again close and apply all right so now see when i right click on it i can see other aggregation as well so let's me let me pick some here okay now you can see a change in vertical axis as well but the issue for chronological order is there so how are we going to handle it there are certain ways to do it uh, what we're going to do to resolve this issue uh, we will click on enter data and we will call this as 
months list so column one name is month names and the other one is for month numbers okay now for the month names we will type from for jan we will say it will be one then for feb that will be two then for march and so on okay okay so we have made a list for month names and month number let's load it All right, let's go to the model view and uh, let's connect the month names from month field here very simple just drag and drop it on the month name so we have this relationship here right now we will go to table view and uh, we'll go to the month list table so we'll select this month names column okay and we will say sort by column as month numbers so what happens technically each of the month name is being assigned a number right next to it on the back end so what we're going to do now we will not select the month from here but we will go to the month list and we will select month names from this table so now as you can see uh, we got the chronological order sorted very right jan feb march april see how we're going to do this all right now what happens next month for instance uh, we got four months data so let's go to the folder and let's say if i add one more folder for the next month file for the next month it is i have added uh, may and june as well into this folder now let's see what happens okay so we just place the files here in this specific folder and let's go to the power bi click on refresh but so see uh, now may and june has been automatically added here so this is the advantage of uh,